YouTube family. We are back and I want to thank you guys for tuning in to this video here. If this is your first time to my channel, my name is Ken Banks and this is the perfect place for anybody looking to persevere in life. We discuss topics such as success and growth mindsets, different topics about mental health awareness, as well as life as an introvert. The topic of this video is why and when to apologize. Now, why is this a topic that we have to discuss? Because understand, knowing how and when, why to apologize can save and improve a lot of your relationships and friendships and things like that, professional and personal levels. So tune in. I always forget to say this, but I gotta make sure I say this. Last video I just posted up, um, you guys did amazing. Uh, so this time again, let's try to get the same thing. Let's try to get 10 likes on this video. And if you haven't yet, if you enjoy this content at any point in this video, please do hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification so you know when I post a video. Guys, I personally cannot stand apologizing because one, I'm usually not the person that's more wrong. However, that is such an immature way to think. It's not about your 10 wrong and my three wrong. It's about, hey, if you're in the wrong, you apologize for the wrong you did. Now, what they choose to do with themselves is not in my control. I can't, you know, force you to apologize for your 10 wrongs, but that lets me know a couple things, what kind of person you are. That lets me know your character. Let me tell you something. Growing up, I thought that the person who apologized was weak and you don't want to apologize. You don't want to be the first person to apologize. However, again, that's immature. We are adults here, I believe most of you guys, or you're a mature teenager, you know, whomever's watching this, we understand that being able to apologize to somebody shows strength. It does not show weakness. You can tell because the amount of strength it takes for you to apologize to begin with. You have to swallow a lot of pride, get rid of the ego. You have to become selfless. The people with really good, great, outstanding character are people who are able to apologize and not for selfish reasons, but just because they're genuine. It's important to take responsibility and own up to your own actions. Honestly, do you wanna be around somebody who is always doing wrong or is in the wrong or who's toxic? However, when you say something to them, or maybe you don't because you don't have to, but a good friend will say something to their friends when they're in the wrong or when they're doing something that they feel is outside of their character. Now, do you wanna be around somebody who can own up to their actions and take accountability for what they do, what they say, how they handle themselves, and to be able to apologize to the necessary people? Because you have to understand it takes a certain level of self-awareness to be able to grow and develop as an individual to begin with. So a person who doesn't take accountability for, and responsibility for their actions mean that they lack the self-awareness to even understand that they did something wrong to begin with. So how can you grow and develop as a person when you lack self-awareness, when you lack accountability, responsibility, and you don't have the ability or you don't see the importance of apologizing to people when it is necessary? As an adult now, I try to apologize as much as often. Even if I didn't even really do anything, if I think I did something, I apologize. Guys, when you feel like you left somebody with a toxic or negative energy or vibe, apologize for that, literally. Because sometimes we aren't entirely sure if we did something wrong. But if you have a, a hint that you did something wrong, be proactive, apologize. It's as simple as, uh, hey, um, I'm not sure if you know you feel away, but I was just thinking like, I hope you didn't take this the wrong way. I didn't mean that whatsoever. And sometimes people are gonna be like, oh, well, you know, no, I didn't think of it like that. But deep down, oh, they thought of it like that. And they were already mark blocking your number and everything. Which is, I'm just not you know, trying to make this an immature thing. But however, I'm telling you, sometimes people don't voice their frustrations with you. They voice it to somebody else or they take it somewhere else. But the thing is, we wanna be proactive. We wanna make sure that we're being self-aware enough to understand how we're making people feel. And that's emotional intelligence. Now, if you need help with emotional intelligence, I can make a complete video about that. Just be more aware of how you feel, how people feel, the energy and the vibe in the room, and how to really hone in on that and actually use that to your advantage because majority of highly successful people are emotionally intelligent. It's almost something that is more placed because everybody who is, you know, success, extremely successful isn't somebody who has a high IQ. They just, they just specialize in something. More times than not, people who usually go further in life are people with high emotional intelligence. Because see, the thing is, even if someone doesn't think it's that serious, 
we care. We care about how we treat people. That's just that. We care about how we treat people. We want to always give off the best impression, no matter what. No matter what. And if you're dealing with somebody who you're like, no, they deserve this rudeness, they deserve this attitude, then you probably shouldn't have them in your circle because I only aspire to have people around me that motivate me, inspire me, or help me be, you know, help have similar goals and desires that I do in life so that we can help each other become the best versions of ourselves and accomplish our dreams, accomplish our goals and aspirations. Guys, it took me a long time to really understand this, but it's not always about what you say to somebody, it's about how you say it to somebody. Because I was someone as, you know, in, in, in my youth, <laughs> I'm still in my youth, but in my younger days, um, I would just say any and eh, like every and anything to anybody, you know, without thinking about how, you know, that would affect someone. And I realized that, like, you know, tones matter. And I really learned this a lot with, in relationships and stuff because um, the women I've dated in my life always scolded me about this, my tones, um, how I say things, not what I say. It's usually you're right. But boy, people don't like when you're right and, you, and you're not respected not you know being respectful about how you're saying these things to them. And I'm not saying that I'm cussing and all these things like that. I ain't saying I ain't, but I'm just saying that like you know it's about how you say things. We really got to control that sometimes because that can be the most toxic thing. And you don't want to say something that a person needs to hear and that's very beneficial for them, but they don't want to accept the message because how it was delivered. And that's a very important thing. We have to make sure that. Because I used to think like, I am correct. Why are you making a big deal out of this? Just ignore that. It was just like, no, you can't say, man, I, I can't even think of like a, a subtle way to even, I can't even think of a subtle analogy that isn't, that doesn't come off as very disrespectful. Um, it's just, I don't know. We just have to be mindful that we actually have the ability to hurt people. And the fact that we can't really go back and fix things. So we have to be very aware of the moment to not do things that we have to later go back and try to correct or apologize or, you know, ask for excuse. I mean, to, you know, try to be excused for our behavior. But um, guys, acknowledgement of your wrongdoings helps people heal, helps people heal. And if there's some, there's some, probably some people in your life right now who are long overdue for an apology that you've never issued out. Make sure you do that. I am, this is a big part of, you know, my values as an adult to apologize for my wrongdoings, big, small, whatever. Honestly, I mean, like it eats, it eats at me. So I have to always be genuine. I have to make sure everything is precise with how I step, with how I maneuver, with how I carry myself as an individual. Now, this is probably something that's obvious. However, we have to make sure that this is said or this would not be a complete video. But make sure that you ask for forgiveness. Do not make the assumption that since I talked to you about it and I mentioned it, that we're good. It, there's nothing else we need to do now. Go ahead about your day. I'm gonna go ahead about my day. I'm happy we had this time. Thank you for listening to me. Because you gotta understand, the apology is not for you. It's for them. Now, it's to make amends, right your wrongs, which is for you. But it's the relationship that you value. It's the person that you value. So this is for them. This is for their positivity, not yours. Don't be selfish with your apologies. It's for them, you know? And then sometimes you have to follow up with, what can I do to make this better? How can I correct this? You know, where did I go wrong specifically? And ask for their feedback. Not to challenge them, but to understand them. This is obviously somebody you value or you care for, care about. Make sure you do that. And finally, you have to understand that it's not up to you how fast they forgive you. You gotta sometimes give people time, give people space to process everything and, and, and to, you know, figure out if it's worth accepting or if they're just like, hey, no, this is just toxic behavior. You're toxic for me. I do not want to deal with you moving forward. Actually, the time I spent away from you was more helpful for me. You might be thinking about how you lost me, but I'm thinking about how I lost problem, how I lost a burden, how I lost a negative person. And sometimes we don't always see that because we're living life through our own mind, our own experience, that we don't understand how people experience us. That in your story, you're the hero, but in somebody else's, you're a villain. And you want to make sure that you don't feel that freaking role in somebody else's story. 
You want to make sure that you don't play that role in somebody else's story because that's not who we are. We don't want to be a villain in anybody's story. I w I'm the main character in my story, but I hope in other people's stories, I'm somebody significant. I am a very valuable character in their puzzle, like in their story. Um, we don't want to be a villain in anybody's story. <sighs> Guys, I want to thank you for watching this video. I mean, if you made it this far in this video, I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you because for one, that means that you care about this topic too. That means that you enjoy my content. And three, it don't even matter. I just appreciate you because you stay here to the end. So let me ask you a question for everyone here. On a scale of one to 10, how good are you at apologizing? And what I mean by good, I mean, do you do a good job at apologizing? Because some people are just like, man, I'm sorry, man, just whatever. You know, you know what I mean? Are you good at apologizing? Are you, uh, you know, at the apology itself, itself, are you good at that? Set so aside from that, are you good at going to apologize? I mean, knowing when, understanding when you're wrong and asking for forgiveness and, you know, asking, hey, I'm sorry if you can excuse that. I didn't mean that like that. What I meant is this, you know? So there's two different sides the action of it and the acknowledgement of your wrongdoing. On a scale of one to 10, how good are you at that? And if you haven't, if at any point in this video, if you got any value from this, please hit that subscribe button for me so we can try to hit this a thousand subscribers this year, man, or as soon as possible. This year is just my original goal. I ain't really pressed on like, you know, the timeline of it because we're going to keep doing this regardless because we do this because we enjoy it and I get value from it. And I love that anybody, any one, two, three, five, six viewers, people that enjoy this, it really helps me feel like I'm doing a lot because it don't, it don't take too much time for me to do this. I appreciate it. I enjoy it. I value. So as always, everybody, continue to persevere, stay positive, and be blessed.